Got it. What's up? Hey, how are hey. you? Doing good. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. I, <laughs> I just logged in. I'm like, oh, he's already there. Just... <laughs> yeah, I just got on here too. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'll do the little spiely stuff here. So uh, welcome to Make Your Own Fun. I'm here with uh, David Howard Thornton. And um, I thought I would start with uh, maybe something you haven't heard too often, at least I hope not. And okay. um, so obviously you're an actor and that takes up so much time of your day and weeks and months. And mm -hmm. then the other hours of your day, you have to you know, um, sleep, eat, all this other stuff. There's a lot of promotion that goes involved with various projects. And I guess I just wanted to start off by saying thank you for doing everything that you do with the conventions. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, as you know, um, I'm sure maybe you do maybe 10, 12 of those a year. I'm not exactly sure on the number that you attend. And I know that's a lot of traveling and everything for you, but there are... Mm -hmm. um, people uh that like that one convention is like the highlight of their year it's the only one they're gonna go to it's you Sorry, know cat <laughs> <laughs> she just decides to walk right across my yeah, lap like i'm not feeling this one yeah <laughs> but yeah so you know what i mean it's just uh i think it's great because um i know you've got to sit there for a long time and you know you're signing a lot of memorabilia for things but um, you know, there are people that wait outside these convention centers, as you know, for hours mm -hmm. and they, they, they book their hotels sometimes months in advance. So yeah. it's a real testament to you for taking the time. Um, and I think also from what I know about you and what I've read about you, that you're a fan of things as well, too. Oh, yeah. You know that other side of it where it's like, Oh man, I hope this guy's not a dick. Oh man, I've been, <laughs> I mean, I've been out here in the rain for like seven hours, and yeah, if he doesn't sign my Captain Power decoder box, I'm gonna be so pissed. <laughs> but you know what I mean? So, oh, totally yeah. know what you mean because I I've seen that from other people at conventions. I'm not gonna name names, but I've seen those people that are kind of like that, where they they don't even show up to their table until like five hours into the convention because of you know, someone else had a photo op when they wanted their photo op in the wall. I'm not showing up until after my photo ops. <laughs> just ridiculous. I, I'm, I'm not lying. That really happened. No, I know. I know. And I'll, I'll throw yeah. a name out there too, because I don't think he attends conventions or at least not anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, I know some people that have uh, worked on one of his shows in the past. Um, a creature... <laughs> Who I will call uh, Boreanis, David Boreanis. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, that guy. Um, I don't know, man. It's just <laughs> I have friends that were doing like background. I think it was on Bones that said that he wouldn't even take direction from the director. Um, wow. Until right before they were getting ready to do a take. And it was like, well, are you going to come over here and rehearse? Like, no. And he's holding his cell phone thing. Like, you know, rolling, camera speed. And he's looking at his phone. And he's just going, uh-huh. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's great. Sure, whatever. That's great. Wow. So, and he keeps getting work. And I know he, he started off doing the, uh, in the horror genre, you know, doing mm -hmm. Buffy and everything. But. I guess it just goes to show you, like, if you're, you, maybe he's too big to fail at this point, but yeah. it's just like, oh, and, I, and another friend of mine said, he like, once he saw him in a convention in the 90s, and he was just like you said, he showed up, and then after that, like, he didn't want any part of it, he was, like, five minutes before, and the line was, of course, out the door and everything, I don't know what happened to my image, sorry about that, yeah. <laughs> That's an old oh, no. picture. <laughs> it's a good picture, though. So uh, don't worry. Yes, I look like I should be fronting a Duran Duran cover band. Or something. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is up with my hair. It's like pseudo uh, Duran Duran, pseudo vanilla ice. Oh, my, my hair does all kinds of weird things. <laughs> so I, I understand. It's just like, I, I love it when I was out in California recently because there's no humidity out there. I was like, oh, my hair is so nice out here. And I come back to New York and it's like... <laughs> again i'm like ah oh, god <laughs> <laughs> so are you living on oh there i am 
Yay. There you are. So are you are you living on two coasts or just based east coast now or I, I'm based east coast, yeah. I was I was just out there back in uh June filming um is it June or late May? One of the two, like filming a, a, a Christmas horror film that's coming out this year. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, it's I'll, exciting. I'll, I'll work into this. And um, I was thinking about this earlier. So you get so many questions about uh, Terrifier and Arthur Clown. So mm -hmm. I was thinking, you know, the Scream franchise has uh, the movie within a movie, Stab. Yeah. What would you say, if you just had to throw it at the wall, uh, if Terrifier franchise was ever to do like a you know future film where they had a movie within a movie, what would it be called? And from whose point of view would that fake movie be from? Mm. Oh boy, what would it be called? Now, now <clears throat> my writer fuel. Yeah, oh my God, what would it be called? <laughs> It would definitely be an art house film for one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But um, I mean, I didn't mean to put you two on the spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just thought it was like a fun kind of, you know, twist there. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it would definitely be uh, from the the view of the victims, though, because it's like, especially the first film, because. You know, that, that's kind of how we're wanting it to be. It was like, you know, you don't know what the heck's going on. It just, this all happens in this series of hours. And it's just this, out of nowhere, this clown comes from the shadows and just starts killing people. And no one knows who he is, what he's about or anything like that. So I, I think, you know, it's that, that's more like the mystery that's involved there. It's like, what the heck's going on with this guy? So I, I think, it'd, you know, of course, be from like the perspective of the victims and stuff like that you know, of course that would have to be from two different perspectives because you know you, you'd have to have it from like the 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 Hayes sisters I guess you would uh, say yeah yeah <laughs> I almost think, think it was going to be funny if the the uh the fake uh art in these you know the movie within a movie looked nothing like you oh yeah like yeah nothing yeah. at all like not you know the body type is totally oh totally totally different totally different, totally different. And of course they would, <laughs> they would have to meet eventually like the actor that plays him and like the real art would actually have to meet oh you be... totally do i know you're a fan of uh the marx brothers i think that would be a great to do like a i think it's duck soup with the mirror mm -hmm. scene the hard the mirror scene yeah that's that's I, that's that's something i've always wanted to do that scene i think that would just be so much fun it's just like I've actually propositioned that to Damien. I'm like, hey, I got an idea for something we could do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, who knows if you'll ever pick me up on that, though. <laughs> I, I mean, it just lends itself to that, you know. And I mm -hmm. think, and that would be such a great kill moment. Oh, if, my if gosh. The There's so much you can do with that. Clown by doing, starting it off really lighthearted like that with, you know, a mirror, mm -hmm. fake mirror sequence. And then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, playtime's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I have my ideas for it. And I'm like, oh, God, I would love to, you know, maybe maybe when we get to, like, Terrifier 10 or something like that, they'll finally <laughs> allow me to do that. So, Well, with the way the franchise is going, man, I mean, wow. I mean, I, and I'm sure you get this a lot, too, that you never saw this coming. Oh, God, no, no. I mean, we were like a tiny little low budget independent film. I mean, we, we made the film on $35,000. <laughs> like, that's, that's not even, that's less than most actors get paid to do a film in the first place. So it's just like, I think that's Bruce Campbell's day rate if he's like doing a cameo. Yeah, probably. I would not be surprised. And just, that's that's what's insane about it. So like, yeah, we made a whole entire movie on that kind of budget, and it's just. But you know what? Crazy. I mean, you not to cut you off there, but I mean, it's like when you watch the film, you really, you, it just that that all that stuff goes out of your mind because you're mm -hmm. so focused on the performances, and yours is really magnetic performance, especially. Um, I even find even the stillness of the character really creepy mm -hmm. because we're just so used to people, you know, being in motion. And that's yeah. really something where it's like, well, that guy's not moving. What's wrong with that guy? Yeah. But he's just, well, I, I, yeah. you know, the, th the uh, Kubrick thousand <laughs> yard stare. Just what, mm -hmm. what's happening here? <laughs> oh, um, I, I love having those moments where it's just like, you know, just... Where, where, where he, he even has like natural human-like moments where it's just like he, he responds to things 
like anybody else would, but it's like you're just not used to seeing a slasher villain have those kind of reactions to things, everyday, you know, situation type reactions. It's just like, what? <laughs> Where he like, like, like when the gun runs out of bullets and he gets frustrated with it. It's like, are you kidding me? It's just like, I, I love that kind of stuff. I even like too that sometimes when he pokes his um, head around the corner and he he's a, saying hello without talking to a prospective uh, victim, and mm-hmm. he does the little way. Yeah. To me, that's almost akin to like Jaws, like seeing the fin come out of the water, where it's like <laughs> it's just part of the iceberg, sort of you know poking out, but it's like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah it's like, like oh you're, we're in for it oh yeah God. you're done so that's that's like why we had to definitely do that in the, the teaser trailer for part two is do the wave again it's just like that's I, that's become one of his like little things i guess well yeah that's a great yeah it's a great callback um yeah <laughs> so i know you've done a lot of voice acting as well and um i i did that like maybe years ago i haven't done it for a while but one thing that I noticed a lot of voice actors seem to have in common is when they were younger. I feel like a lot of them, you, me, us, um, watched uh, animated shows and tried to mimic, like let's say Family Guy or, or, or The Simpsons are going even you know, farther back. And, and to know that it might only be you know, a room full of people doing like 40, 50 voices. Yeah. So that's something that you did when you were younger oh, as well? God, yeah. <laughs> I still do that. I still do that. I, I will sit here and like, I mean, just the other day, I was just for shits and giggles watching the uh, the Rabbit of Seville uh, with you know, Bugs Bunny. And I'm sitting here just singing along with it. And, <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't do it when my roommates are around because I probably just seem like a total nut job sitting there. But like, when no one else is around, I was even when I'm playing video games, I will sit there and I, I always have the subtitles on and I will read the lines with the characters and do voices and stuff like that. Just it's 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 I, I guess it's just constant practice for me. And just like I'm always trying to practice voices and stuff well, like yeah, that. Yeah, and it's a challenge too. I mean I I think there's mu- there must be a YouTube clip up somewhere <laughs> of Seth McFarlane going into the vocal booth doing a take, coming back out as the writer, producer, and going, eh, mm-hmm. and going back in, doing another take. And then, like, it's a mental thing, you, you think it is, because then for no reason, he walks to the other side of the microphone and does the other character. And it's like, yeah. it's just a microphone. It's going to be, it's, you know, you know, universal. It's not, but it's a mental thing where it's like, oh, now I'm Stewie. Oh, yeah. I'm Peter. And I think it's like on a certain level, like you have to do that because otherwise yeah. it's like, well, wait, where am I in the script? Who, who the hell am I? <laughs> mm-hmm. that, that's, that's so true. It's just like, cause I've, I've had to do that too, where I've, I've had characters that are interacting with each other and like, you know, fighting each other too, which is really weird. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm fighting myself. It's just like, it, it's, it's, it's weird because you record that one character, then you go back and you have to record the other character and it just feels weird. To like stand in the same place and stuff like that because it's just like it's a, it's a whole mental thing that you're doing there and of like I, I mean I've even done like shows on stage like when I did the 39 steps I've done that show twice and like uh the two clowns that are in the show play like 30 plus characters each so I, I've had characters that have to interact with themselves on stage so it's just like yeah I'm having and there's like a whole thing is the hat routine where you're having to constantly just change hats for the characters because it's, it's on a train, so all these different characters on a train, and you're playing all those characters on the train, like the conductor and the kid and the woman and <laughs> salesman and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, but yeah, I would have to change positions and everything because it's just... <laughs> yeah, who am I right now? <laughs> yeah, because otherwise you're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that that's not like, you know, in the booth, you have the luxury of able to just, you know, record one character and then you can mentally switch to other character. And on stage, you have to just switch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And so that's that's even more challenging. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think that's why you know, like you know, because I get the question a lot. You know, if if I'm like I take the 
guess you would say the Jared Leto approach to characters where or Daniel Day looks the method acting approach where I'm in the character all the time on set. I'm like, no, no, because it comes from my stage experience where I, I've had to play multiple characters in the show and I have to be able to just boom, boom, switch in and out of characters quickly. So I, I can just do that. I don't have to sit there and, you know, walk on crutches all day just to oh, God, get a character. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I made the joke years ago. I think he's retired now from acting, but uh, Daniel Day Lewis, I, I said something like, um, you know, coming to a theater near you, Daniel Day Lewis has post office mailbox. And it's just like the blue, <laughs> you know, the blue, the old school blue metal mailboxes <laughs> where you walk up, pull the lid, put it in there. And it's just like at some point, it's just going to get up and walk away. And it's like, yeah. well, that thing's been there for seven years. That's method. <laughs> yeah. And it, I totally would see him doing that. It's just like, oh, Jesus. Um, like, have you ever just tried acting? I know. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the famous uh, with Dustin Hoffman, right? Yeah. Um, method, um, a marathon man. Yeah. Olivier was, he was like, I've been up for, you know, four days and I want my character has been up for four days. And I'm like, like, Dustin, have you ever thought about acting? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, like oh. Olivia yeah. tells me that I'm screwed. Um, I, I love it though. I love it because it's so true. It's just like, I mean, I, I understand when people need a few minutes to get in character and stuff like that. That's oh, yeah. totally fine. Like, That's totally if, fine. Because you have to remember, you know, what scene came before. You have to mm -hmm. think, like, oh, do I need to like really amp myself up because the scene starts and I'm in a frenzy. Well, yeah. <laughs> nobody's just walking uh, around the corner from the 7 Eleven going like, frenzy frenzy got it yeah just working yeah. yourself up you know yeah uh but i i don't have to sit there all day as the character <laughs> i I, th I think i think if i did that as art on set they everybody would just mute me and want to kill me because it's well, like yeah oh. and i and i find this too um having uh written some horror stuff is that horror and comedy are a really important marriage together because mm -hmm. you know not only just tension breaks but um there's got to be levity because the the yeah. subject matter is so heavy so serious so dark and you're filming at night what 90 percent of the time and it's yeah. like if you're not having fun though oh yeah i mean that's i like the the, the places we were filming for both films especially this one location we we're filming in for part two which is like in this dingy like basement that's used as a haunted house for just like a few months of the year so it's like they don't have heat down there and it, we were doing this in like january and february and it was just cold and miserable down there and it's like good god who knows what we were breathing in they had like one night where sewage was leaking in through the ceiling from the upper floors because they had when they had done renovations like they didn't put the pipes in the right way so all the sewage from the third floor was leaking into the second floor and the second floor ended up busting and going to the floor that we were on so there's like this stream of just sewage coming down <laughs> oh and it was just like and i mean we didn't know that at first we're just like that's weird and it doesn't smell good we're all staying away from this giant puddle over here <laughs> oh you would almost know it's going to grow out of it yeah or latch like, onto our uh, shoes yeah oh uh, it's like this play I, I swear like you know a lot of us didn't get covid for the longest time and I think it's because of the stuff that we we're breathing in that space is like this one room was in particular we were filming and it was just a bunch of debris in there and it was like oh my god I'm mean, like I, I just remember like a few days later I, I was like blowing my nose and all this black crap just came out of my nose oh, I'm like, god. what was I breathing in like in this what place? coal mine did you crawl out of yeah I'm like this is oh god no so yeah it's like when you're in those kind of environments and you're, there's not you much acting to. required to be yeah. yeah and creeped out oh my god we we were just, i would do anything i mean that you've probably seen like there might be behind the scenes videos and stuff like that of me just dancing or something like that and it's like maybe three o'clock in the morning i'm doing it both to stay warm and just to keep myself sane <laughs> oh yeah and keep the energy up you know yeah. all that stuff um let me ask you this so um with the last two years and you know projects starting stopping you know mm -hmm. covid lockdown were there any projects that you started late 2019 early 2020 that had to go on a long hiatus that you had to come back to and kind of 
get your mind back into it and go like, oh, what was I doing in six, nine, eight, 10, 12 months ago? Yeah, that was Terrifier too. <laughs> oh, you guys shot right before? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that's why it's taken so long to come out. Cause yeah, we were filming it. We we're pretty much almost done with it until then COVID happened. I mean, like the good thing was like, the lockdown happened the week after we saw that we shot this big, huge crowd scene oh, with a bunch good, of the Indiegogo good, yeah. backers and all these stunt actors and stuff like that. So that that was the scene we were all stressing over the most because there was just so much going on in this scene. And we got it done. And then literally like a day or so later, New York went into lockdown. So we're like, oh, thank God we got that finished. Oh, thank God, because that would have been disaster. But I mean, we still had stuff to do. We had two major kill scenes to film. And, but in a weird way, it kind of like helped us because Damien was the one still doing all the practical effects. So like we had started filming both of those scenes and, you know, but we hadn't gotten to the real kill scene part of it yet because Damien had to build the prosthetics for it. So we're like, yeah, but yeah, at the time, he was only going to have a quick turnaround to build that stuff. But then we're like, oh, wow, now we have months that we're going to probably be locked down. So he's like, well, you know, I got more time now. So I can really flesh these scenes out more than what we were going to do, because now I have the time to build the stuff I really wanted to build for it. Ah. And so, yeah, it's like, like one of them is like probably the biggest kill scene in the movie. And I call it the yellow room scene. And originally it was supposed to take just maybe two days to film. And it ended up taking about a week to film because there's just so many more elements that we added to it. It's just, it's basically five minutes of me just slaughtering somebody. Oh my God. It's probably one of the longer kill scenes ever in a slasher film. When you think of it, it's just, it's, it's insane. And it's just, it's because of COVID we're like, okay, well, Hey, we got time now. Let's throw everything we can into the scene. Throw the kitchen it, sink at it, throw everything yeah. at the wall, see what sticks. Yeah. Has, there, has there ever come a, a point where, I mean, obviously critics be damned, but where you've had um, conversations with the director saying, okay, horror, horror, at what point is there a line? Is there like torture porn? Do we do we butt up against that? Do we jump oh, over yeah. it? That's over? definitely this scene. <laughs> 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 that is definitely this scene. It's like, holy shit, we're probably going to get some hate from some people because it's just Jesus. it's so 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 violent and i i know like some of the like the um different distributors that we were talking to they they wanted to make some cuts to the scene because they were like uh and we're like <laughs> no no do not cut this do not cut this is gonna this is we're trying to change the game here we you know we're we don't want to like just sugarcoat everything because i i I feel like that's what's been really going on with, you know, slashers, especially in this, these past decade or so, so they, they become so tame. Well, so yeah, they, there's, there's a, uh, a definite prevalence of going right up to the line. Uh, I call it like, okay, going right up to the line, take, putting a toe in the water and going, yeah. ah, that water yeah. was cold. Oh, it, it's so funny. It's like, it's like, I remember like when the movie Joker came out, and they were talking about, oh, how controversial that scene was on the, the, the night show. The, 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 the scene, you know, where he kills um, uh, De Niro, yeah. De Niro's character. And people, oh, this is a big, huge, controversial scene. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. I was pushing. I'm, like, I'm like, oh, bitch, please. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're talking about something yeah. that is like uh, a major motion picture that like... Mm -hmm those actors hadn't been involved with something like that i guess but i'm like what but that's how they were really hyping up the movies like oh wow this is really controversial here this is wow people are going to be talking about this scene because it's it so, could be spin it could be hype. yeah be, oh we sell this because we have to differentiate it from heath ledger's joker yeah we make it seem like oh yeah but he this, we went a step too far like what's yeah. a step too far like you fall into an abyss i mean <laughs> oh i know it's just like no please like you know independent filmmakers have been going so much further for the longest time too that's and especially with horror you, you have to take those risks that's what we're supposed to be doing with this genre 
horror and comedy both you have to take risk and that's what i'm saying is not happening in either genre right now i'm like comedy, the last time? Oh. we haven't had a good comedy i don't know in how long it seems like and, just... I, and again this is a fine line and i don't want to get too much into politics but i i mm-hmm. feel like comedies have really been cut off at the knees especially r-rated comedies Mm -hmm. um i am really happy to hear that mel brooks is working on history of the world part two and he took it to hulu because he liked what uh steve martin did with only murders in the building Mm -hmm. um and he said well i'm a 95 year old man i don't i can't stand the heartache of taking this script around even though i've won an oscar (laughs) to studios and being told no when I know the material is good and I know the actors I want to work with are going to be big names, people will want to watch it, but everybody that he's going to come in contact with on that executive level is going to be much less than half of his age. And they're not fans. They see him as a has been, they don't care. Uh, It just. No respect. I'd like the the guys like, god of comedy um he was like when i when i first moved here to new york i was it was about a month into living here i was going to an audition for a a, a tour of fiddler on the roof and they were doing the the read through for young frankenstein the musical in the room oh, right cool. next door to us and so this was right before peter boyle passed away too oh, and so yeah, that yeah. so they take a break i i guess for you know the first act they decide to take a break you know and so they're all filing out of the room. So you're seeing like Chris Chinowith and Roger Bart and Sutton Foster and Terrence Mann, all these big Broadway names, Susan Stroman. And then like all of a sudden, you know, Peter Boyle walks out. I'm like, oh, well, but you could tell even then he wasn't doing too well. And then all of a sudden Mel Brooks walks out. Now everybody else kind of passed by us. It was like, oh, hi, 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 you know. Mel Brooks stopped and came up to every single one of us in that line waiting to go in for our audition and shook our hand and wished us, you know, break a leg on our auditions and all that. And I was like, I, I was, I, I was literally speechless. I was, I was just so dumb because I'm like, this is the man who I was watching my whole entire life. I've, I've been a lifelong fan of Mel Brooks films. So I was just like, uh, uh, I yeah. love this city. <laughs> I'm like, I just want Mel Brooks. I'm like, holy crap! It, 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 yeah. The funny thing was, I was about to sing a song. I, I was originally going to sing one of the songs from the producers for my audition. For and I was like, I'm so glad I didn't do that now because I would know that he was in the room next door and he could have heard me singing. I'm like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> but yeah, oh god. But to, to think that you know he he took that time to just come up to all this young actors aspiring actors you know we're not big names at that point and was trying to encourage us to you know do our best on our auditions and stuff like that was that that spoke volumes about that man's character Mm -hmm. class act in fact um i read an interview with him a few years ago where um he did something similar i went to see the producers at the hollywood bowl and he mm-hmm. came out and um, he did that. Uh, and I guess he went backstage before the show and was doing that with a lot of the actors that just had, you know, walk-ons, like five and under lines and things like yeah. that. And um, someone asked him, um, you know, you're so busy, you have so much going on, you have so much pressure and you're going to make this speech, you know, before the show and after the show and this and that, you know, do you really have time? And he's like, I make the time because I know what that time means to these young people. And also because I wish when I was their age, someone in my position would have done that for me. Yeah. That's, that's oh God, I love the man. <laughs> it's just, cause I, I miss, that's the thing. I miss his comedy. I miss that style as the screwball, funny. All of that stuff. Just, like, oh. like your, um, your Monty Pythons, your mm-hmm. even Saturday Night Live has gotten so watered down. Oh God, so watered down. The, the only thing out there I, I think has been really good is everything that Taika Waititi's been doing. Taika Waititi, like, and then the new season of Kids in the Hall. Yes, that too. Yes, yes. As like because I I love what we do in the shadows. I love oh, yeah. our flag means death. I'm like, oh my God, I want to work with him so badly. <laughs> Every I, single thing that he's done, like who would have thought? uh for jojo rabbit yeah the third reich is beetle mania yeah 
it's crazy it's, oh, it's man. I, I but he's he's like one of the few you know directors slash actors out there that's actually keeping that style of comedy going Every, I mean, especially here in the u.s is it's all just like just dumb down fart joke comedy now and it's just like that's no well, you can do fart jokes good. but you but know you can, yeah like you can do it in a creative way like mel brooks did with the the campfires thing. <laughs> blazing saddles yes it's just like you can do it but it's just like it's it's like it's just so frat humor in so many ways and so that's i mean i'm i love especially like british comedy i oh, yeah. love there there's something just just so cutting about british comedy it's just, it's the satire it's 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 dark but it's funny and, and they take those risks and you're a big rowan atkinson fan right oh god yes so <laughs> oh, god, mr. Yes. mr bean and then you've got uh, black adder mm-hmm and everything else the guy's done. He's just got one of those faces where it's like he can do, it's kind of like, a, a well, Gene Wilder called it a problem, but you know, he's got yeah. one of those faces where even when he's trying to deliver <laughs> important <laughs> dialogue to move the plot along, you're still going, trying to like not laugh because you're like waiting for the gag, you know? Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. I mean, I, it's Peter Sellers is the same way. Is just oh, like, Peter Sellers was so. Good. It's just like it's that, the, and and all three of those guys are so good at just being deadpan. You know? It's just like just very, especially with Rowan when he was doing Black Adder. He was oh. so good at the deadpan, just like dry humor there, and it's like, oh god, this is brilliant. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> Well, well, let me ask you this. So uh, for the horror genre, um, is there anything that you've seen in the last few years uh, that you're that it's kind of jumped out at you um, that you're like, I want to work with this person or this director or like, oh my God, this blew me away. I'll, I'll start. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robert Edgers. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know if you've seen his three movies or not, but I always I always forget what were his, his movies again because people uh, always the make... Witch, The Lighthouse. Oh and yeah, Northman. yeah, yeah. I'm okay. It's like his, his style is a different style for me. It's just like it's like I don't know. <laughs> well, it's really low key. It's not yeah. slasher at all. It's all mm-hmm. atmosphere, and definitely uh, Lighthouse is definitely more like H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. Yeah. And my joke about H.P. Lovecraft stories, and maybe you'll agree with this, is every book or story that he wrote every third page <clears throat> the main character was saying am i going insane yeah <laughs> like, i actually had someone these approach tentacles me coming through my room aren't normal right <laughs> yeah, I no, mean, no. right that's, that's a little weird my tea, you know yeah I, I had someone approach me recently was like you you should play that i that it's that i should play like hp lovecraft in a movie i'm like oh that would be fun yeah, I could do that. I could totally do that. But yeah, but I mean, I mean, I, I love like, you know, because um, like I said, I'm a big comedy person, but horror comedy. So I was like, I, I really loved uh, The Babysitter. Uh, I, I thought that was a, just a lot of fun. I loved um, uh, Ready or Not. I thought that was a really good, just fun movie. Um, of course, anything Guillermo de Toro does, I'm just like, uh, yeah, I would love to work with him. I, I just think he's He's got such a great creative mindset. Very, he, he and Tim Burton both have that very dark, creative, artistic vision about things that I, I like. Very whimsical, I guess you could say. Yeah. I, I like I like whimsical. Um, so yeah, those types. Of, I, I really love Psycho Doorman recently. I thought that was. I, I don't. Okay. I don't think that movie gets a lot of love that I think it deserves. Especially, especially like the the little girl on it. I thought, oh my. God, she is hysteric. Wherever they found her, I was like, she's. It's like it's unusual to find a child actor that is that good and that funny naturally. It's like, man, she is like a little powerhouse. It's like, I was like, I was even like, man, I would love to see her character go up against Art the Clown. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, she was just the sass that she had. I was like, oh my God, Art would be like, you're cool. (laughs) <laughs> I like you. Right, 
Right. The, <laughs> the, the best child actor I think I've seen on screen this year so far is probably the girl who plays young Princess Leia. In the oh, yeah. Series, because that's a really narrow path yeah. because you, you want to pay homage to, the, to Carrie Fisher, but you, you can't go there and have her be just outright uh, sarcastic the whole time because she's a kid. Yeah. But also, it's like if you don't, then the character, then she comes off like aloof and goofy and uh, annoying. Yeah. So, uh, oh, she was great, yeah, especially for someone that movie. age. It's like, like, what she's like nine years old or something like that. <laughs> acting with Ewan McGregor. Oh, it's just, it's insane. And she was adorable. I was like, oh, oh my God, she's so adorable. I'm like, oh, it's, it, I'm always amazed when I see child actors like that. I was like, wow, you're just good. God, you're good. Just because that's natural. That is natural because I, I see so many bad child actors and things. And it's just like, it's just, especially like the Disney fi just like everything. Hi, I'm just so cute. Yeah, it's everything like, is at like a nine level the entire time. There's no, yeah. here, there's nowhere to go. They no. come in the room like that and you're like, uh, uh, no one's going to match this energy. <laughs> shoot me now. I, I remember that. I, I tried watching like the, the, the reboot of Full House, Fuller House, and I, I only could get like through like three or four episodes before I was like, I can't, because it's just all that forced. Look how funny we are! <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like oh. if you lived your life every day like that, you would die after four days because oh. your body couldn't handle the strain. But no, no, it's just I, I can't stand that. So it's like <laughs> when I see these child actors, it's like, oh wow, you're just really good. This is, I'm like you are going to go far because like that's natural that's a natural gift that child has and they're humble too for the most yeah. part from what i've heard but uh, uh believe it or not we were uh getting close to the 40 minute mark so we're oh, gonna wrap no. it up here i know i know <laughs> we were just on a roll here but um just wanted to see if there's anything you wanted to plug i know you've got your your website things on youtube so i'll, I'll give you a few minutes to do that yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram under David Howard Thornton. I have a YouTube page, and I also have a Cameo and Memo page as well for like that kind of stuff. But um, also, of course, Terrifier Two coming out this fall in October. Um, oh, October! Awesome. October, yeah, we're going to be releasing in theaters. Uh, I think they're doing like maybe about five hundred theaters for like Fathom events and stuff like that. And if it gets you know a lot of people going to it, they'll keep it in the theaters longer. So that's awesome. Also, um, I uh, got this uh, other horror film coming out hopefully this Christmas. I can't say what it is yet, but I will say it will make your uh, heart grow three sizes, maybe. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And um, next year, I have another film coming out that I made with the Terrifier team called Stream. And it's got a lot of a uh, great horror legends involved in that as well like d wallace and jeffrey oh. combs tony todd danielle harris it's a huge cast of people so it's it's something we're hoping is going to become another horror franchise as well so you know i'm trying to keep busy nice well you yeah. are uh hitting home runs as they say um you know thank you so much for being on the show thank you for taking the time thank um, you. you know, and thank you like i said all you do for all the conventions because like I said, so many people, you know, it, it makes their weekend to come out yeah. of these things. And, and it makes my weekend too. I love it. <laughs> it's just fun. And I, I love to hear that. And also I'm going to give a shout out to um, some people that uh, you and I both know, which is um, Josh and Sarah Schultz. Yes. I've interviewed them. her on the show. She's a yes. sweetheart. I'm hoping to work with them here in the near future. So. Oh, they're great. They're great um yeah so and they actually recommended i should reach out to you and they said <laughs> he's a he's a great guy totally laid back really funny and i'm like well, that's what i like to hear <laughs> all right that's well fantastic. thank you so much david thank you for being on the show and uh, nothing but the best for you sir and have a wonderful weekend all right you take care man all right bye now <laughs> bye